What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs today in the studio. Folks, as always, I got a real treat for you. Jefferson Rogers back in the house. What's up, Jefferson? What's up, Brad Lee? If you guys don't remember Jefferson Rogers, he's a young entrepreneur. Had about a, I don't know, $10, $12 million window business. You been, you you were here a while ago. 2021, yep. 2021. Show was a little smaller back then, but uh, mainly talking entrepreneur space. Nowadays, we talk about everything. But good to have you back. Thanks for having me back on, brother. The reason to the, jam with you. Well, the reason I had you back is because you come out with your book. I want to let everybody in on it and let you, you know, help promote your book. Appreciate that. I want to. I want it to be a bestseller. The book's called All In, folks. All In. Get unstuck, accelerate, and go further, faster. Look at you. You got good eyes. That's right. Well, actually, no. Now that I'm about fifty, I need readers. But from here to there, I can see I got to squint a smidge. So how you doing, buddy? Been great, man. What have you been up to in the last three? Life is good. Just been focused on my priorities, the business, family. Is trying that, to get better every day. Is that was that your priorities three years ago? You know, I think it was some of my priorities. I've gotten them straightened out over time. What I happened? Was distracted on a lot of stuff. Like what? Let's talk about distraction. Lots of distractions. Like so what? I think back in 2021, I, I spent that whole year traveling, doing masterminds, workshops, boot camps, events. I traveled probably close to 200 days that year. Trying to, trying to bust into the influencer space. I sure was, man. It was. It's, uh, it's, it's alluring. It was alluring. That was the word I was looking for. Yeah. It, it, and it, some of it was advice that I'd gotten that I'd just taken my own perspective and man, I'm going to go be an influencer that over time it was, it was clear to me that it didn't really align with my true goals. So there's a lot of people out there, I believe doing that. Yeah. Now let's break that down though, because there's a difference between an influencer or content creator and a person with influence, right? Yep. What do you think the difference is? I mean, there's a lot going on on social media these days, and there's a lot of people hiding behind their content and being consistent on putting cool stuff out there that aren't necessarily successful in other areas of their life. Well, that's for sure. Business, family, love, just all around. I mean, look at Sean Combs lately. Look at old P. Diddy. Interesting story. See, that's another thing. You know, there's always these people that admire the celebrities and the big shots and the influencers and the famous people. And everybody's like, oh, I wish I had their life. But in reality, if you really knew what their life was about and what they were really doing behind the scenes, you wouldn't want any part of it. It just takes a while for the curtains to open and see what's really going on. But. I hear you only because again, I'm, I was kind of, I'm in that influencer space kind of, but I don't think I'm an influencer. I don't tell people, you know, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm an influencer. Cause I don't. <clears throat> and we were talking outside earlier while we were puffing a nice Cuban about what we're talking about now. And it's like, you were, you were trying to get into this coaching and mentor and mastermind and influencer space when you had a freaking lucrative business. And you got distracted from growing your business because you were trying to grow your brand. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think that brand grew? It did. Do you think because of it, it helped grow your business? The direction I was going, it wasn't helping my business. At all? I think it maybe was. Just, you know, people go look up JKR Windows. They look up Jefferson Rogers as the leader of that company when they're coming to look into an opportunity. So it was helping partially, but just wanted to really focus on that specific goal and get rid of all the noise, the stuff that wasn't really serving me that I wasn't getting a lot of energy from. So at what point did you realize, hey, this isn't aligning with my true intentions and goals? I have, I work with coaches and mentors and I had a, a coach I was working with, he's a 70 year old man and and working with him for pretty specific reasons. And he actually came as a referral from Coach Burt. Mm. And he told me one day that he's like, man, 
I see what you're doing and, and I understand why you're doing it, but why don't you go build the business first and prove to people that these are the things that you stand for and that you have the credibility of being a business owner and doing something special. There you go. That's good advice. Who's that guy? What's his name? His name's Dave Blanchard. Really good guy. Dave Blanchard. Good on you, Dave. That's my advice to people all the time. Everyone always says, dude, how do I do it? I said, dude, let me tell you what I believe should be your path. Number one, build something, do something. And then that's, that's, you know, commendable or, you know, do something well, don't murder Mm -hmm. people and anything dumb, but go build a business, scale a business, do something, and then turn around and help other people that want to do the same thing, do it too. So, but you are, you already had a business. So you, you could have, you could have done that. What were you doing that wasn't, in other words, what he told you is, Hey, go do something first. Well, Mm -hmm. You already did some. You already built a twelve million dollar a year business. Yeah, I mean the the business was doing well. I never. F- when you came from nothing, just so people, if they don't remember and they don't want to go back and listen to your old episode, you used to be a druggie, an alky, a what? Yep, partying all the time and didn't have any money. Didn't come from money, right? Yeah, yeah. So you basically came out of the mud and built a you know, $12 million a year business. That's pretty good. A lot of companies never get to a million, let alone 12. Yeah. That's one thing about really successful people is they, they never, no matter how far they've made it feel like they've made it. So I I didn't, you know, I didn't really feel like I had made it and it almost feels like I was, I was, I wasn't aligning with my, with who I wanted to be. So just made a shift. That was, I remember that phone call distinctly because it, it kind of validated the feelings that I already had about the path I was going down and man, let's get my goals realigned, some strategic priorities, get really focused on the business and becoming a better father and a husband and a leader. Let those things speak for themselves. And I still do content. I do a podcast, but it's now just focused really specifically on my goals. What are your goals? My goals are to take J care windows to a billion dollars and to continue to level up as a leader and a communicator so I can earn that spot. And it's it's kind of cool to think about it from a different perspective. With a billion dollar company, the version of myself that I'm gonna have to be to become the leader of that company is a whole lot different than what I'm doing now. Are you prepared to do it? 100%. For I don't what? know what it's gonna look like, but I'm, I'm working in that direction. Yeah, but I mean, you're gonna have to know what it looks like you have to see it to be it, don't you? Not always. You have to be it to become it. What we did, so if you take 24 million is what we did in revenue in 2023 as a percentage of a billion, that's a pretty small number. Fraction. So I can I can see the big picture and I often visualize and, and try and manifest cool shit into my life, but I have no idea what it's going to look like or what I'm, what kind of leader I'm going to be at a billion dollar company, just working in the direction of what those goals are and taking the steps based off my awareness right now to become a little bit better. But there's, there's no way, you know, what kind of, if you had a billion dollar goal, did, could you communicate what kind of person you're going to be? I do. I will. I can. Yeah. I would love to hear that. I want to be exactly the same individual as I am right now, except for a lot more disciplined. See, there, there are some, that's all I'm missing is the discipline. There's some nuances there. There's some specifics that at a billion dollars, there's things that you, you aren't doing now. And you, you don't know what the difference is between what you're doing now and what you're going to have to be doing then. If you continue to chase that. Wouldn't I, wouldn't I just be doing more than I'm, or as just doing more than I'm doing now? That's one of the factors. But that's it. What else is there? If you're doing 24 million, it's because you did X amount of deals. You did X amount of deals because you talked to X amount of people. You talked to X amount of people because you have X, X amount of salespeople or, and you spent X amount of dollars. So if you said, hey, if I'd have spent twice as much money and had twice as many people, I probably would have done twice as much revenue. True, more than likely, up to a point. And then at some point, it's like, now what? Well, if, if you look back at people's, you know, 
business careers, they'd basically say, you know, what ended up happening is, is I, as I was doing this, then we reached about, you know, 80, $90 million. And then I got into manufacturing my own windows. And then I started selling to all the other people when in reality, what made them a billion dollars or a billionaire wasn't the business they started anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. And they, and they wouldn't have known, Oh, I know what I need to do to be a billionaire. I got to go get, do, do my, you know, become the manufacturer. And there is, along with those things, there's a combination of skills and repetitions as a leader and a communicator and negotiations that you're going to have to develop to have those opportunities, don't you think? Uh, again, the, the rule would state that you cannot be the same person you are now then. Because if you want to be a billionaire, you have to, be, you have to change Period. The mm-hmm. reason you're not a billionaire right now is because you're not, you, you're not that person. You literally have to become a different person. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to figure out, well, what type of person would you need to be? Well, we can only assume and hope because you don't know. Right. Like what type of person is going to be six pack and shredded and, you know, well, what do you mean? What, what type of person what I need to be in order to be ripped and shredded. Well, I can make some assumptions. I need to be one of those, you know, disciplined son of a bitches and obsessed to where like, it doesn't matter whose birthday it is and what, who's on vacation and who's drink. I'm saying, no, I got discipline. I'm hitting the gym. I'm, I'm treating it like it's a, it's a mandate. There's no options. I got to be obsessed. Mm-hmm. Then I asked, well, am I willing to do that? Are you? Well, I mean, again, we were yeah. talking about this three years ago. Yeah. Well, same type of things. A hundred percent. And again, I mean, dude, clearly I don't really care that much. Do I? <laughs> and by the way, until I experience it, I can only make an assumption and I've voiced my opinion many times. I don't believe that being shredded and having a six pack is going to make that big of a difference. I could be wrong. Everybody who's shredded tells me I'm wrong. There's plenty of billionaires that, that aren't shredded. Exactly. So again, what you, to me, it's like, I don't need to be shredded to be rich. I don't need to be shredded to be in love. I don't need to be shredded to do really anything that I want to do. So why make that type of sacrifice? I think it's, I want to be shredded. I want to be a, a healthy person. I want to live a long time. I want to be a great example of the people around me. And that's just one of the components that I make important in my life on my way to a billion dollars. I don't want to be a overweight, unhealthy billionaire. I want right, to be able but to I'm enjoy not it. overweight and unhealthy. You're not? No, not even fucking close, bro. <laughs> you think I am? <laughs> oh, we, you just got all defensive. So something's going on in there. No, I mean, do well, by whose definition? In other words, right. by a guy in a six pack. Yeah. I'm probably overweight, but for, to a fat guy, I'm not overweight. They'd pay to look like me. You do have good genetics. Yeah. I look pretty good. I mean, I take my shirt off at the pool. Nobody's laughing at me. Nobody's like, Oh my God, I look pretty good, especially for my age, but I look pretty good. Even if I was 30, I don't look that bad. You know, could I be, Leaner, of course I could. So could you, by the way. Of course. Yeah, but I mean, you're in good shape. But you're not fucking shredded. No. Well, dude, shredded would require massive more Mm -hmm. discipline and dedication and determination and work than you're putting in. Yeah. So my question is, why? Why aren't you shredded? Trust me, I could... I've got my own insecurities about my, about yeah, but my why, appearance. But why aren't you shredded? You're, you're in probably better shape than I am, but you're not shredded. Why aren't you shredded? I'm shredded because I don't take the time or... But why? I've got other focuses in my life. So <laughs> again, this is, my, this is what I'm driving at. Uh-huh. You've decided at some point, it ain't that important to you. Because I know you can be shredded, because weren't you shredded at one point in time? You did like a contest and shit and you were like shredded, shredded. Remember that? Mm -hmm. So at some point in time you said, eh, it ain't that important anymore. It was a 
something I checked off the list and now it's more about maintaining. How can I be healthy? How can I have energy? How can I pour into my business with everything that I need and still be a good example, be in decent shape. But you're right. When I was, when I was that shredded three years ago, the first time we met, it was three or four hours a day in the gym. It was five, six days a week. It took up a lot of my time. And you're right. That to me anymore isn't as important as these other goals in my life, which is my family, my business, and that, that billion dollar goal, which takes up a lot of energy. Okay. So why can't you do them both? Are you some I, sort of I weak, probably could. weak-minded individual? I probably could because I'm certainly not a weak-minded person. Well, you know you could. The question is, is why don't you? And, and the reason I'm bringing this up so everybody can hear it, because, dude, there are thousands of people that listen to this show that have a fucking gut. And they think if they're not shredded, they're going to be losers. No. Now, again, <clears throat> I want people to understand that's not necessarily true. Okay? It depends on what you believe, you personally you personally, not Jefferson, but the listener, what you believe, because when you at some point were shredded, you believed that that was going to achieve some sort of happiness for you. Hmm. Otherwise you wouldn't have put in the work because it was work. Wasn't it was it? certainly a lot of work. And now you're like, dude, that, that ain't worth it. And I'm where, see, I was already there. I didn't have to go do what you did to realize what you realized. <laughs> And I want other people to realize it's okay not to be a six pack shredded up freak. And by the way, when I say freak, I mean obsessed. I don't mean a bad thing. Because yeah. if someone could say, Brad, push a button, you'll have a six pack. Sure, I'll do it. Oh, yeah. I'd love to look that way. The problem is, is I don't believe that that type of effort is going to pay off. Well, because it takes away from other things. It's just not going to pay off for me in, a, in such a way that I, that I believe that, because again, if I really wanted to, yeah, I could, I don't really want to. And someone says, well, why not? Don't you want to be this? And don't you want to be that? Because when I rationalize to myself, I think to myself, what, what will change? Am I going to get, uh, is my wife going to be, is she going to love me more? Am I going to get a bunch of chicks? I, I don't want chicks. If you're in it for the right reasons, it's not about that shit. But what's it going to get me? A self-esteem, a confidence that I've never had. Well, it'll help you be healthier. Healthier how? Do you know do you, there's people with six packs that are not healthy at all? Well, I'm saying like a base level. Like what I've determined is worth my time in the gym two, three days a week now. Back when we met on the podcast three years ago, I was doing six or seven days a week. Yeah, you were obsessed. a ton of my time that was taken away from my family, my business. How'd it pay off? And my goals. And it, it paid off in some new awareness <laughs> that I didn't want to keep going down that path. Are you trying not to be a bad example for people that are looking for an excuse not to work out? No, you still got to work out. I believe I, and I do, by the way. Otherwise, I would be fat. Right. You, but you're working out. Yeah. But it's not six days a week. No. For three hours a day. Which is why I important shit. Which is why I'm not shredded. And then people want to give me shit about it. And there's people listening to this that, w that will give me shit about it because they're shredded. And the reason they're shredded is because they've decided that that is what's going to make the difference. And that's okay for them. I may too, because I'm going to go get a six pack by June one. Are you? Yeah. I'm going to try. Because <laughs> Andy Elliott said he'll give me 50 G's. It's not a bet where I lose 50 if I don't. He'll just, he said, if you can get a six pack by June one, I'll give you 50 grand. Do you do core? Do you work out? Yeah. So all you'd have to do is just diet and just get all the flab off of there. That's and it. You'd have an F and six pack. That's right. That ain't it, that hard. It ain't that hard. That's and I'm going to, and I'm going to do it though That's for the 50 G's. It's the 50 G's and it's the freaking look fuck faces. I can do it. Just like when I was young, my dad told me to get straight A's. He'd give me a hundred dollars per A. I got straight A's. I came home. I said, boom. He said, good. Now we know you can do it. He didn't pay me my money. <laughs> and he said, now I expect you to get them because uh -huh. you just proved you could. And then I went back to a C and D student. So again, when I set my mind to something, I can do it. So can everybody else in the world. Mm -hmm. If their mindset goes to that level for me, when it comes to fitness, I don't believe, and I get 
I've said this before on podcasts and social media, and I'm sure this will be used as clips. And I've had people say, you, well, you wouldn't say that if you got that way. Okay. Well, I'm going to get that way just once or twice, maybe like you did just mm-hmm. to, just to do it. But I'm, I, I won't, if it requires six hours a day, because I'm not doing that. I don't care. You can keep your 50 grand. You know what I'm willing to give up? 90 minutes. Which is totally doable. Totally doable. So if I can give up 90 minutes a day, five days a week, great. Then I'll have a six pack. If after a year of 90 minutes a day, five days a week, I don't have a six pack. Well, then I'm never going to have one. I think it's less about the 90, 90 minutes a day than it is about your diet, your discipline diet, with, bro, your, I can, with your food. Dude, listen, I'm, I'm good with the diet. I can freaking, I mean, I don't, but I could, <laughs> I could, because I've done it, eat pretty freaking clean for three months straight. That's all it would take. Because so when do you have till now? June 1. June 1. So it's basically basically April. April, May. May. You got 60 and then days. It's, and then it's June. Yeah, I got 60 it. days. You better turn it on right now. Turn it on. I've been turning it on for the last week and a half. You just don't <laughs> see it because... <laughs> Take some time to present itself. Yeah, it does. But so anyway, you'll see it in June one to say, Hey, FaceTime me and say, let me see your abs and you'll see. And by the way, I mean, I've almost had abs before. If I pull up my shirt right now, you'll see the, the, the these kind of showing the top ones. Yeah. It's down here that it needs to go, go. <laughs> but when people say, you know, well, Brad, you, you, you know, you're not in shape. Motherfucker. I'm in shape, dude. I can run probably as long and as far as, a normal person. When's the last time you ran a distance? Well, I don't run distance. When, when's the last time I ran? Yeah. You just said you could run as long and as far. Yeah. I mean, like I could go run five miles. I get on the treadmill and I do a uphill walk Mm -hmm. at uh, 4.1 speed, Mm -hmm. which is fat, pretty fast for walking. Mm -hmm. And I walk for 45 minutes straight and I could have kept going. I just, you know, figure 45 is enough. Yep. So again, I'm conditioned. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly good shape. My whoop, my HRV the other day was 93. That's freaking good. I just put mine on today. So I don't know what those numbers mean. Of course, of course, you know, a week ago, it was 43. The higher the HRV, the better. Okay. You know, my resting heart rate. I've, I've been in the 46s, which is killer. And then, you know, on average it's 52, 54. That's great. That's pretty good, especially at my age. But dude, I'm overall, I'm in pretty damn good shape. hundred percent. Gary Brecken did my blood work. Every, I'm in pretty good shape. You know, no, I don't have a six pack. Yes. I got a little bit of love right here, but that's okay. Why? Cause I don't care. That's what it boils down to, dude. I don't care. Yep. So where I was going that with you is what made you care all of a sudden about your priorities? Because I want people listening to understand that just because a bunch of influencers tell you that you got to be in shape or you're a loser doesn't make that true. What made you decide eh, being in shape isn't all that? Because otherwise you'd have kept going, wouldn't you have? Yeah, it took a lot of time. I would have kept going if it was that important to me. But just like the influencer, all the intentional content that the hours every week that it was taken for all these things that when you look at them from the outside in weren't aligning with my goals once I got really serious about them they stopped becoming as important and I just got refocused on the things that were important okay so how do people figure out what's important so they don't have to make the same mistake you did it's constantly auditing what you do with your time we got 24 hours in a day I need you know doctor tells me I need more than four hours of sleep which is I thought was bullshit at one point, but then my, my blood work is telling me another story. It's like, okay, maybe I need to take this seriously because my health is suffering. Sleep is very important. So I've, there's all of these different aspects in life with my diet, my sleep, my exercise, the time that I pour into my company as a leader and the repetitions there getting better and better at communicating with people, spending time with my family, doing the daddy daughter dates and taking my son to the motocross track and doing date nights with my wife. Like there's all these things that, over time, I realized we're more important than these other things that were taking my time. So for you to be able to get new habits and become more disciplined on important things in your life, you got to get the shit out of the way that is not as important or not serving you. So you can focus on the other things. How does one find the other things? 
I think one of the ways is hanging around. Like I, every time we're together, you're always just taking these little things that I say and pointing out your perspective, which helped me in, in my perspective and like a new awareness about, okay, this guy respect his opinion. And he just pointed out something that I hadn't looked at that way. And now, okay, maybe I was thinking about it differently and I need to reprioritize, which we just had a couple of those out on the balcony. Yeah. Cause I mean, dude, if, when someone gets sick, let's say you just get told, Hey bro, you got some sort of brain cancer. Oh, you got new priorities now. Now all of a sudden, dude, th- those, those abs are not that important anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, you want to go spend some time with your kids. You want to start, you know, you, you all of a sudden go, wait a minute, my priorities have changed. So that's what it boils down to is someone who needs to figure out what their priorities are. The problem that I had and that I assume you had, and I want to help these guys figure out so they don't do the same things we did, which is unfortunately, sometimes that's just what you have to do. Like, no, no they're not going to listen to us and learn anything. They're going to go do the same thing. And then three years from now, they're going to say, I should have listened to Jefferson on that podcast mm-hmm. because I just did the same thing. And you wasted three years, basically. How much time did you put into all of the things that you thought were important only to find out or realize later, they're not that important. It's, it's a long, long time. Not only if you got that back and you could invest it more wisely now, I mean, I would love that, but the reality is, and you know, as well as I do that most of us have to learn the hard way by doing it. And we could be told as many times as you want to by mentors and coaches and parents and I'm a shining example of all these people around me that care about me. They're trying to give me direction. And I got to go freaking learn shit the hard way. Me too. And then be like, okay, God damn it. I, maybe I, <laughs> I should have listened. But without those experiences, without having learned it the hard way, you know, you just wouldn't end up where you're at. Well, your business uh, sounds like almost doubled. Yeah. Since the last time we talked. Okay. So in three years, that's pretty good. What'd you do to make that happen? You weren't ignoring it the whole time. At what point did you say, wait a minute, I'm, I'm still doubling my business. Well, that, that year I told you that I had a goal to do 20 million. We ended up at 14 million. So yeah, you know, if I've got big, crazy ass goals, I got a goal to have a billion dollar company and we'll do maybe whim. in the next five years, billion dollars in the next five years from 24 million in 2023 that's a that's a huge hockey stick type of trajectory some might say unrealistic unrealistic it's stupid it's silly you know it's laughable for some people but even if i like coming up short by six million that year in 2021 was still it was a 40 percent increase over the year before wasn't what i had planned to do but it still was a pretty damn good year and then I get shit from you like, wait, you told me you were doing 20 million already. It's like, well, I mean, I have big goals and sometimes I talk about them. I don't always hit them. But this billion dollar goal, even if I come up halfway short, I'm still going to be at a $500 million company, which I'm not sure this feeling will ever go away in me of not being good enough and needing to do more even at 500 million. But that's, that's what fires me up is just the goal and the person that I have to continue to strive to be, to hit the next level this next month, let alone the next five years. So what's, what's changed, uh, looking back in the last year, like when, once you made this realization, like what, what did you change? Where, where, like, how did you reinvest the time? Back into my business. So instead of doing the intentionals and having people follow me around with a camera, you know, there were great repetitions and you get good and being on the spot with content and sharing your opinions. That was great. Where I, where I get the most fulfillment and where I feel like I build the most momentum and confidence and make the most progress is when I'm working in, in leadership and working with my people. And I notice that if I'm off on vacation or that year in 2021, I've, I lost confidence because I wasn't working with my people and working on the things that were going to help me make an impact on my business to help me get better on the things that were going to help me make more money. Why didn't you just blend the two? I did. So now you you still see me coming out with content every week, every day, really on my personal social media and on my JKR windows, social media. Now it's just focused on growing my business and leadership and being involved. I was hardly involved in 2021. My company still grew. 
I just got re-involved in 2022. And because of everything that was trickling over from 2021, we went backwards. I did 13 million in 22, but then all the momentum started picking up and we went from 13 million to 24 million in 23. So I just started combining those things and paying attention to what my goals were and doing a little bit of both. But, you know, you make a shift in your, in your approach. My social media, when I was working with Mandy, had gotten up to like $126,000 or 126,000 followers. And over the past two years, it's gone down. So How I much? Just, I was just focused on different things. It's gone down. I think I'm at like 118,000 now. Do you know why that may have happened? Why? Because you you weren't aligned, meaning the followers you were getting were, were looking for this other person yeah. that you were being. Absolutely. And then when they said, wait a minute, this guy's this leader dude, this guy's this business dude, this guy's this other guy. Yeah. Boring. He's, he's gotten boring. <laughs> It is, it is boring. It's not flashy. Yeah. Cause sometimes when I talk sales, I talk business, you know, I get some followers, I get some comments, but it's when I talk about current affairs, relationships, women, men, yeah. you know, society, when I talk society stuff, I get millions of views and shares and you know, where, where you send it to other people, you know, it's unbelievable. And I'm thinking, dude, I, I, you know, <laughs> doing it for the followers, baby. It's basically to the point now where I'm like, dude, I'm going to, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I'm going to just basically start running my companies and let people watch that. Yeah. And if they so, don't like it and I lose some followers, that's okay with me. Do you know why? Because the keyword is aligned. Exactly. And if they shut off social media right now, believe it or not, my businesses would still move on well yeah you were telling me earlier that you you don't even you never mention your name your business or what you do and it's not meant to drive customers to your business i wasted what a if, lot of it but what if you did oh i would have been five times better off business wise so that's what i saw is you know i was getting some fulfillment out of it and it was alluring but it wasn't serving my goals it wasn't driving my business and it's not as flashy but now it's it feels better when I do pour time into it, that it's aligned with my goals. And if I'm going to take time away from other important things in my life, I've only got so much time and I want to be able to use it in a way that I can feel good about it. Yeah. Well, I would highly recommend for you to continue to build the brand because mm -hmm. I'm telling you, dude, oh, yeah. a brand, a powerful brand is powerful and it can help you blow up your business beyond anything else you can do. The difference is, is the content that you're making you just want to focus it back to the company. Right. And I think I'm one of the things you mentioned earlier on the, on the balcony was just mixing in my interpretation, just mixing in some of my lifestyle and my personality instead of just business sales leadership, which is the majority of what I've been doing. But I've, I am the brand and the more of that that I can do, I think there's a good mixture. In do there. I see so, you at your kids' motocross games? Not much. Do I even know you have a kid? Recently, you probably wouldn't see anything on there about those other important areas of my life. Yeah, so it sounds like maybe you went, you were a little bit too much this way, and then you went a little too far that way. It's like, what's the all in? All in is my personality. <laughs> all oh, yeah. in in one direction. And that's the way I've been going for the last couple of years. Sometimes you got to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, you got to, you got to, or just find a good spot. Because again, people do want to see the leadership shit, but they, but, but they want to see you more, more so, I think. Yeah. And again, sometimes you, 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 a lot of people that do this, they can't handle the hate that comes along with it. Oh, you treat your wife like shit or, oh, you pamper your wife too much. Or, you know, they start commenting on your kids and they start mm -hmm. commenting on your per, per parenting yeah, speaking of Skills. that, you do you do homeschooling, don't you? Yeah, that's one of those areas where I didn't get a whole lot of hate, even when I was doing the other style. But when I started talking about things that were important to me, that there's a better mixture of opinions in leadership and in sales. You know, you don't get the hate all that much. But when you start talking about lifestyle stuff and 
homeschooling and your relationship with your kids and your wife, then I'd get people coming out of the woodwork to tell me how big of a douchebag I was because I so homeschooled did, my kids. How did that affect you though? Because if that's it's, what made you stop, dude, that's what that that's where you screwed up. No, I don't think you that's to, what made me stop. But you just need to you just need to be you and be willing to be you. Meaning, I anyone wants to tell me that my homeschooling is terrible for my kids, they're out of their damn mind. They're pissed off because they can't successfully do yeah. it yeah. or they can't afford to. Homeschooling is better than any public school out there. Now, maybe not any private school, but the private school that my kids went to, it was a problem. Mm. Just because it's private doesn't make it good. So I took the teacher from our school and now they're... They come to the house. Yeah, every I mean, she, day. The teacher that 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 we got is a teacher, like mm-hmm. from the school, that was fed up with this public nonsense. Also, yeah. And so I said, "How much do they pay you? Why don't I pay you a little more than that?" And all you have are my two kids. Yeah. And she said, "Oh, that would be wonderful." Yeah, very similar to what we're doing. So, so all I did is hired my own teacher. When people think homeschool, they think I'm sitting there trying to help them figure out math. Like, listen, I do help them on some occasions, but I, I do that in public school. <coughs> Our homeschool is, is private education. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't call it homeschool. I call it private education. And quite frankly, I feel bad for my kids. I almost want them to go to school. Why? Just for the social aspect. Right. But guess what? My kids are constantly on the phone. Everywhere we go, we have friends that have kids. They have their best friends. We're always going on trips. Andy Elliott's kids are my kids' freaking twins. They're always chatting and talking. Like, dude, they're fine. They're more socially sound than than other kids. And then when I see other kids that are going to public schools that are coming home with nose rings and freaking... Uh, they have certain kind of parties that I can't even believe kids that age have those parties. Mm-hmm. And then you start to realize what they're teaching in the school legally. And you're like, how is that legal to be teaching a third grader? But at the end of the day, you don't get a choice because that's been decided for you. Not for me, bro. And I don't yep. care who talks shit. Yep. I don't give a fuck. Yep. I think we're on the same page there. Are you still doing it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah for the last, since COVID, we've been homeschooling the kids yeah well that's a good move trust me you're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna eventually be thankful not to mention it's much safer no one's gonna come to your house and shoot up the school (laughs) so so how did you write the book what inspired you to all of a sudden now come out with a book is that a is that a uh influencer kind of move or did you just say hey man i need to write a book well, I think that's when I started it was when I was going down that influencer path inspired by Coach Burt. And you were, you know, we'd actually met at your office back in 2021 and we're doing some personal branding workshop thing. We flew in on the jet and, I and that's, that's when I started it. It took me two and a half years to write it. But more, I think the more I've, I read your book, the more it sounded like we had done it for similar reasons, more than just, you know, the influencer thing. It was making an impact and sharing the knowledge and helping people bl- build belief and that things are possible for them that they don't maybe realize right now. And sometimes it can come from a book like it did for me when I first started doing smart things with my life. It was because I had gotten a recommended a book. It was the 10 X rule. I listened to it on audible and it just fired me up. I joined a mentor group two months later. I got sober two months after that started my business two months after that. And my life just freaking took off. And I can tie it all back to that damn book that just inspired me and helped me believe that if this freaking backwoods guy from Louisiana can do it, I know I can do it. 100%. So, dude, that's my point. That's why I wrote the book. It's like, dude, listen. Well, I wrote the book because I said I would. After I said I would, I didn't really want to anymore. And then I just said, dude, I got pain in the ass. Well, it's dude. It was a pain in the ass, but I said, I got to do this. I can't, and I can't ghost write it is, did you ghost write it or did you write it? Write it. I ghost, I did the ghost writer, dude. That's not even the hardest way to do it. No, Uh, but it still took me two and a half years. I know. But like, dude, I had to sit down and write it, write it. Every word of it is 10 times harder. Ghostwriter, you talk and you give them your story and you yeah. tell them what you believe and you know you basically 
get it out of your head verbally, right? And then they go off and write the book. Then you got to, you know, revise it and then boom, there it is. It's still a lot of work. All right. Know, and it's try, still in my words. But dude, try to write it from a blank piece of paper and start out with a sentence. Dude, I would, I would write like a, a page and then I'd have to read the page and then I'd change the page. And so for like freaking a week, dude, I wrote one page and I rewrote it a hundred <laughs> times. And then I realized, dude, this is like, I'm trying to be too wordy. This isn't me. I said, yeah. what, 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 did you read my book? Yep. Can you tell I wrote it? hundred percent. That's where I boiled back down to. I'm like, screw it, dude. I'm just going to say what I would say. And so uh -huh. boom, bang, 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 and I started typing and I started writing and boom, I thank God finished it. Cause I said I would, but I've had people tell me like, dude, your book changed my life. And I'm thinking to myself, dude, I wrote it quick and like, come on, like don't patronize me. Yeah. And in reality, I just don't put myself in the right, you know, position to, to see that, Hey, listen, one little thing that I opened up someone's belief system in can change a life. Mm -hmm. So dude, don't believe that your book won't change a life just because you fricking wrote it. You know, Hey, what do I know? What do we know? That's what I was thinking the whole time. Were you? Yeah. And I, I remember you telling me that even before you finished it three years ago, you were still in the middle of it and you said, I need to finish it. But then you said something along the lines of, even though I know that 95% of people that read this thing, it ain't going to do anything. They're not going to be ready. They're never going to freaking do anything with their lives, but it's the 5% of people. That's who I'm writing this for. I think I remember exactly what you said, but that's what I got from it. So that was kind of an inspiration to me to go finish this freaking thing. Well, where, where did people go buy it? Just go to Amazon. And I, I also did the Audible version, so I See, narrated you're it. ahead of me. I still need to do Audible. You should, dude, because it's it's now it's in. Not only have you read it or wrote it, but now you read it back. And when I when I listened to that book from Grant Cardone with his enthusiasm, which I know you have even more of about the value that you have in your book, most people aren't going to sit down and grab a hardcover and go read it. It's like, oh, Bradley has a book. That's great. If you... You're going to be able to reach so many more people if you put it on Audible. Really? And how hard is it? Just sit right here on this microphone and read right it? Right here. Like, you have everything you need to do it right here. And just read it? Just read it. Why wouldn't I make it a video? You could. It could be like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Just reading it to your audience. Once you have the files, because don't you have to do it chapter by chapter by chapter, and then you have to upload them somewhere? How does it work? Yeah. So I work with a company that had done it before and you've got to meet the ACX standards for audible. And then they check it and they send it back and say, Hey, this wasn't right. You got to mess with the tones or the levels. And then we send it back to them after we've made the adjustments. You got to have, you got to meet a certain criteria, but it was, it was fairly easy. I'm going to do it. You've inspired me now. There you go, dude. I'll, 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 I'll get that shit done within the next 90 days. We were also talking earlier about why you didn't do a, a book launch. There's my commitment. 90 days, folks. I'll have audible version out or less. You could do it. You should be able to do it in less than 10 hours worth of work. Well, when you say I, I didn't do a book launch, I didn't do a, a big book launch. Cause when you say, Hey, I got a book, that's a launch, right? I just didn't do the big email and got all my friends to email and do a big push. And, yeah. you know, I didn't do it because number one, I didn't know really how to number two, because I was busy. Number three. Um, well, first of all, I don't even think there's most of it three. is bullshit. After going through it now, you, you just pay for it. If you want to be on wall street journal, bestseller list, you want to be on New York times bestseller list. You just pay somebody to do it for you. You got enough money. You can be on any one of those lists. I did the Amazon bestseller list and I paid companies to do it and market it and help me and put me on the fucking billboard and Times Square. I just paid for all that. It's, it's all bullshit. It's complete bullshit. So Does coming on a podcast like this, though? I don't think it did. I mean, really the only people that <laughs> so I did the right thing without knowing I, it. That's why I was bringing it up because you did the right thing without knowing it and having a brand and talking about your book more on your podcast is going to sell more books than trying to get on some bestseller list. Yeah. And quite frankly, you know, I already knew from other people that wrote books and were on the bestsellers list that they didn't make any money. No, it was all vanity. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I could say it's on the bestsellers list. Even if it wasn't. 
Do you know why? Whose best seller list are you referring to? Yeah. So one of my best selling books, The Hard Way, best selling. It's a best selling book, dude. I, I guarantee you sold more than mine. How many did you sell? I've, I haven't even sold a thousand books yet. Shut up. How long has it been out? Since Halloween 2023. Shut up. <laughs> dude, listen. Hey, Bomb Squad, let's help the guy sell at least a thousand books. There's a thousand of us that'll go buy the book all in just to get you over the hump. Let's do but it. But dude, yes, I've sold more than a thousand books. And it wasn't overnight. You know, it took a while. But, you know, how are you promoting it? This is how I'm promoting it. Just going on podcasts? Just going on podcasts, and I don't do very many of them. Do you post it on social media? And we do social media, but not very much. Do you That's go why I asked you when, when we sat down first is, how come I don't ever hear you talk about your book? Because I have a hard time talking about it, too. Well, you should open up the book and, and, and do a podcast where each chapter is, is a topic of the podcast. I that's, did that one. That's what I was going to do. Personal oh, you did it? Mm -hmm. How'd that work? I mean, it felt good going through it and putting the content out there and letting people know about it, but I don't have the following like you do on Dropping Bombs on my Just Real Quick podcast. Well, what, what's it called? It's called Just Real Quick. See, Just Grow Quick, folks. Go hit that up. Go get the book. How else can we help you here at the Bomb Squad? Appreciate you having me on, man. This is uh, this is help enough just being able to jam with you, put the book in front of the camera and have you talk about it a little bit. I had the, the best intentions coming out with this thing to have the same type of impact that Grant Cardone's book had on me. And even if it's if it helps one person change their life, which I already know it has because I've gotten so many messages about it. Yeah, you will, dude. I'm telling you, no matter what happens, that book right there is going to be around long after you are. Yeah. And at some point, many times over, someone's going to pick up that book and be like, what is this? They won't even know who you are. They won't know shit. They'll read that book and it will literally change their mindset, their belief system, which will change their life. And someone will go back and say, because of that dude writing that book, my life changed. Just like you are saying about Grant. Mm -hmm. It's freaking powerful shit. It's the ripple effect. Yep. And then my last question would be, what are your plans to get JKR windows to a billion dollars. That's a huge growth spurt in the next five years. You brought some of them up. So we're a, we're primarily a sales organization. Now We've got 50 salespeople. I've got another 50 people between installers and admin and operations helping me do all the fulfillment. So at 24 million and close to a hundred people to get to a billion, I'm going to need a couple thousand people. And just on the sales side, but then it starts to, the bigger you think, the more you start thinking about the manufacturer side and going national and acquisitions. There's all kinds of things that help us get to a billion that, are, that look nothing like what it's taken us to get to 24 million. Are there billion dollar window companies now? Yeah. Which ones? So Anderson, Pella, they've been around for. But aren't they manufacturers? but they also manufacture. I was going to say, I don't know if a, you can just be a regular old installation company fucking making billion dollars. Like that's a lot of jobs. Uh -huh. So yeah, I think that's, that's how much would it be to like do a skyscraper, all windows. We do residential. So I have no idea. You don't do commercial. We don't do any commercial. Why? Ours is a, it's a remodel business model. We go and knock doors and talk to people that we know. That's one division windows. Which is, a, it's another division. Yeah, if I was you, I'd open up a commercial division, dude. Because, like, you know, how many houses do you have to do to make $24 million? How many jobs? Well, now go look at the commercial business. You could do, you know, you look at some of those skyscrapers. Someone's getting that job. Uh -huh. Who? How much is that? One job. Bam, $24 million. How much do you think it was to do the encore? The encore, holy cow! I have no idea. That's like roughly, such a big scale. It's, Twenty million, it's millions, yeah. Because I mean, like someone gets the contract to do the floor in that place, millions, this is millions. So that's commercial, man. You need to figure out how to get into this commercial space as well. So you you let your residential fuel 
getting into commercial. And now you've got JKR commercial and residential, and you're out there putting in those bids on those commercial jobs. Cause isn't it just a bid thing? Well, on the door to door side, it's, it's bid while you're sitting at the kitchen table. Yeah, but that's door to door. Yeah. Uh-huh. But dude, you built that up. Now you got a little revenue to invest. Uh huh. So now you go in and you build relationships so yeah, right. with contractors. On the, the contractor side, the new construction, commercial or residential, multifamily shit. Yeah, you there's go, opportunities in all those areas. You go start building relationships with these developers. Because who are they using, bro? They're using someone they know. They're using someone they freaking like. Yep. I should charge you a hundred grand and coach you. <laughs> That's another thing, dude. How do you you didn't like the coaching space you said? I enjoyed it, but it wasn't, I mean, those guys don't make all that much money. Well, not only that, to me, when people ask me, you know, a lot of people think I'm coaching because I do a couple of things, but those are to show people how to do that with the light speed thing. Yeah. I don't take them seriously, but I'll do them. And they're a group, no one-on-one really. Right. Um, and the reason I don't is because, dude, I value my time. And you know how much time that shit takes? Oh, if I've yeah. got, if even if you gave me a hundred grand, which is a freaking chunk of change, man, mm-hmm. you give me a hundred grand, I've got to meet with you X amount of time for the whole year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, what if I had 20 of those guys? Well, pretty soon, dude, I don't have any time. My full-time job is worrying about your problem and your business. How am I growing my business? Unless my business is coaching. Which is if you had 20 guys, that's $2 million, but it takes up all of your time. That's what I'm saying. Like, and not only that, I make more than that with my businesses. So like I cannot afford to spend all my time coaching people. That's why I didn't continue to follow that path. Business for me offers opportunities. I can make an impact on people's lives still. I can coach and mentor and, and develop myself as a leader. But now the impact, the size of the business is the potential is much, much bigger. See, I just, I just, it just dawned on me again. You know, you take these guys like Cardone and Andy Elliott and, you know, Tony Robbins, even they're making their money training and coaching. Their business is training and coaching. So if you want to make big money training and coaching, you need to be a coach and a trainer. You cannot be an entrepreneur with multiple businesses and expect to be able to go coach and train. You got to pick one. Yep. You can't be both. That's all the distractions. Well, the thing is, is like you take somebody that's freaking really killing it in coaching. What's their business? That's all they do. That's their coaches. Mm-hmm. Like what, what's coach Bert's business? What she's, he's what's an his, anomaly. What's his business though? He's, he's a, he's an effing coach. That's his business. Mm-hmm. That's all he does. He don't have a business. Per, like JKR is a business. Lightspeed's a business. My business is, I have multiple businesses, by the way. Do you only have one? Oh, I've got, to, I think I have actual 12 businesses. Now. 12 different businesses. But they're businesses? Businesses producing revenue. Yeah, Most I'm, of them are, I'm a passive type. I know, but I could call like my consulting business a business, but it's just me going to speak for 50K. Oh. Uh-huh. That's not really a business, which is a business, but eh, that's not, not really something a business. you put your time into. So I've got 12 of these other entities, probably similar to that, but I've only got three really that are like my primary income producing business. I call JKR windows. That's a business. Yeah. How many of those do you have? Three. Yeah. So again, dude, then you cannot spend all your time coaching people with their businesses when you actually have businesses. Unless of course you put people in there to run them, then you can. Uh And I might do that, you know, three to five years from now, but I got to finish building something worth building to go back to your boy Blanchard. Uh I like his advice and I'm going to take the same advice. Like, that's why I'm like, I'm toning down the speaking. I told a bunch of people, no, um, they wanted me to do it for free. I'm like, no, (laughs) I'll still do it for 50 K though. You well, want me to speak? I think it's 50K. you enjoy it. So it's, I like speaking. It's, it's fun. Energy. And not only that, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's an easy 50 K, but more and more than that, I, I like doing it because I know there's somebody in that audience, dude, that is going to walk out of there different. Yeah. And to me, that's my job. My job is to get the knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. And I have it. 
I have knowledge. You have knowledge. We mm-hmm. have knowledge, bro. It may not be Elon Musk fucking experience or knowledge. No, I haven't built a billion dollar company yet. Talk to me in five or 10 years. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, but guess what? You'll never hear me bullshitting about it. You'll never hear me say, let me show you how to make a billion dollar business when I haven't made one. I can promise you that. If I ever offer to teach anybody anything, it's because I've already done it. Mm -hmm. I can promise you that. Mm -hmm. You'll never hear me say, let me show you how you scale your business to a hundred million. If I'm not at a hundred million, like how would I do that? Because when someone says to me, I'll show you how to do this and that. And I think, well, have you done it? And they're like, well, no. Well, how, how, how are you going to show me then? Yeah. Social media is full of those people. They're full of them. And I'm getting almost like tired of it. Yeah. And I got to deal with them because I have a software that helps people create courses. Well, dude, I'm not mad if you have a course and you want to train people how to sell and you're not that great at sales it's your course, you know, it may or may or not sell. But when it comes to coaching and mentoring and hiring a coach and a mentor, my recommendation to people would be make sure they've done what you're looking to do. Mm-hmm. Boom. Your time is valuable. Don't waste it on shit that ain't going to bring you Don't value. waste it on shit, man. And not only that, from the very beginning of this, dude, listen, here's our advice, folks. Go get your priorities straight. Okay, you're going to you're going to waste four or five years just figuring out what the fuck you actually want. Okay, and it's okay, It's not a big deal. But man, wouldn't it be smarter to to figure it out quicker? You know how you figure it out quicker? You think, man, you take the time and you freaking spend some alone time and you think, man, and then you go try a little bit. Maybe you got to try some things and then you realize one day and then you fine tune, focus up. And then one day you're an old man going. You know, I wasted 10 years running after something I didn't even care about. And you know what I boil it down to? Obviously, health. Don't want to die. Don't want to be unhealthy. I don't want to live where I, if I if you said, hey, I'll give you a billion dollars, but you're going to have to feel nauseous the rest of your life. Oh, thanks. I don't want that, dude. <laughs> I would say no. I'd rather feel spry and energetic and and not have a billion dollars. But so health is, is, is clearly the number one. And I ain't talking about abs. I'm talking about actual health Mm -hmm. relationships, family, you know, relationships, spending time with people, building experiences with people and then money. That's my order of priorities. I'm not so worried about money that I'm going to alienate relationships. I'd rather have the relationship than money personally, Mm -hmm. because when you die, dude, and you get old and sick and you're dying because you're old and sick, you're not thinking about your money, dude. Steve Jobs said it when he was dying. He said, you know, with all my money, dude, it doesn't mean shit when you, when you're facing an illness, all you're thinking about are people. So like, why do why I got to wait until I'm on a deathbed to realize I should be spending time with my wife, my kids, my people pouring into them, setting them up, protecting them, providing them, leading them, enjoying life. Anything else you want to drop while you're here? That's it, man. Appreciate you having me on. You guys got to grab a copy of the book. Go get his book it on Amazon. It's called All In by Jefferson Rogers. You can follow him on social media, of course. He's at Jefferson K, as in Killa Rogers. Or you can go to Jefferson Rogers. Jefferson K Rogers.com. Yes, sir. Till next time, keep it real.